Welcome back. In the last lesson, we introduced this table of base 10 logarithms, also known as common logarithms. It contains entries for the common log of every four digit number. This was incredibly useful in the days before electronic calculation. We are privileged to have access to all these entries, and many more, at the push of a button. Scientists and mathematicians of centuries past would have marveled at the modern day calculators that have made their tables obsolete. To begin, consider that there are 10,000 four digit numbers. This table is condensed to 1800 entries. To produce this table, you could plug each one of those into the series expansion for the natural logarithm and convert it to the common log. That would be highly inefficient, however. The goal of this lesson is to outline some computational tricks to expedite the process of constructing this table of logarithms. Using hand calculations with pencil and paper, the first log tables took decades of manpower to produce. Consider how useful these were if someone was willing to invest that much time into making them. We will begin with the one digit numbers 2 through 9, as seen boxed here. We start with 2, 3, 5, and 7 because they are prime numbers. Plug these into the series expansion for the natural logarithm. Then convert them to base 10 using the expression at the bottom of the screen. This was covered more extensively in another lesson. Here is the series expansion in case you forgot. This was derived from the geometric series. The numbers 4, 6, 8, and 9 are all composite. They can be made by various multiples of 2 and 3. We already found log 2 and log 3, so it's a simple matter of employing the laws of logarithms. Here is a reminder of the laws of logarithms. So in summary, to obtain the one digit numbers we have to use the series expansion four times. The other four times we use laws of logarithms. Why is this important? Because comparatively, it is computationally expensive to use a series expansion. In other words, it would take a lot longer to carry out a series expansion by hand calculation. We want to minimize the number of these we have to do. Laws of logarithms build off what we already know and can be performed much more quickly than series. We want more of these. Now we can tackle the two digit numbers. This is the first column of the table, as boxed in blue. Same idea with prime and composite numbers. This shows a breakdown of every number up to 100. For the purpose of calculating base 10 logarithms, we can eliminate every multiple of 10. That knocks us from 99 down to 89 numbers. As seen in colored boxes, there are 25 prime numbers below 100. It is unavoidable that we'll have to plug these into the series expansion. The remainder can be computed using laws of logarithms, which should go much more quickly. At a glance, these are the numbers on the table for which we must use the series expansion. In summary, for the two digit numbers we must use 25 series expansions and 64 laws of logarithms. Proportionally, this is much more favorable than the 50% of single digit numbers. Here is an example of using the laws of logarithms. Assuming we've already computed every single digit number, we can use those as the building blocks for two digit numbers. Notice it is simple addition and subtraction. Much easier than a series expansion, especially when doing the math by hand. For the benefit of your understanding, I have boxed those numbers in the table here. Every other number in the first column can be found in a similar fashion. Try a few for yourself to get some practice. Now it's time to tackle the three digit numbers. Here's a list of the 168 prime numbers less than a thousand. Once again, it is unavoidable that we'll have to use the series expansion to find the logarithm of these. Bear in mind, however, that we've already computed this for numbers up to 100. No need to compute those again once you've already tabulated the data. 
At a glance, these are the numbers on the table for which we must use this series expansion. The rest can be obtained by simple addition and subtraction using laws of logarithms. In summary, only about 19% of the logarithms of three-digit numbers must be obtained using this series expansion. The remaining 81% can be computed much more simply. Here is an example. You could break 252 into its one-digit prime factors. That will give you the number underlined in green. However, it would be much quicker to use the logarithms of the two-digit numbers already tabulated. Once you have done the work, there is no need to keep doing it the long way. Build off the results you have already obtained. It will make the process much faster. That value for the log of 2.52 is shown boxed in green. Rounded to four digits past the decimal, it should match what we just saw on the previous screen. So how about the numbers boxed in blue? What are they used for and how do we get them? In short, we are at a fine enough resolution on the table that we can get away with linear interpolation. What do I mean by that? Take the log of 1.1 and subtract the log of 1.0, as seen in purple. Divide by 100. That gives us 4.14 for the first row. The numbers in the table are simply multiples of 4.14 rounded to the nearest integer. That is seen in blue at the bottom of the screen. The same pattern applies to every other row in the table. Go ahead and verify for yourself. So what are these used for? Suppose you wanted to know the log of 1.068. You would add 33 to 0253. That gives you 0 0.0286. Compare that to the value given by the built-in function on a scientific calculator, underlined in red. Having these nine rows for the fourth digit is basically what reduces the table from 10,000 entries down to 1,800. Back then, it saved a lot of paper and ink. Do I expect you to use log tables instead of a scientific calculator? No. Do I expect you to go through all these computations by hand to construct your own log table? Certainly not. But there is value in being able to read data tables. Furthermore, it is important to gain a historical perspective and foster an appreciation for modern technology, as well as the labors of men and women of the past. Can you imagine performing thousands of hand calculations to produce this table just so future generations could be relieved of computational burden?